Therefore, if you desire to please his loving heart, converse with him in future with the greatest confidence and tenderness possible. I have graven thee in my hand, says our Lord, by the lips of the prophet Isaiah. Beloved soul, he meant to say, What dost thou fear or mistrust? I have written thee in my hands, so as never to forget to do thee good. Whoever prays with faith and confidence may look for success in this cause. Our Lord often revealed to St. Gertrude the delight he takes in a confiding soul, and once said, A person who prays to me with full confidence does violence to me, so that I must grant him whatsoever he requests. Another time, after having prayed fervently for a certain intention, St. Gertrude asked, O Lord, what shall I add to these prayers to make them yet more efficacious? Jesus, turning to her with a countenance full of sweetness, replied, Confidence alone easily obtains all things. Confidence was the characteristic feature of Gertrude's life, and she was accustomed to say, All that I have received I owe to my confidence in the gratuitous bounty of my God. The following is another of her revelations, showing how agreeable to Jesus was this confidence. Although I regard with pleasure, said our Lord, all that is done for my glory, such as prayers, fasts, vigils, and other like works of piety, still the confidence with which the elect have recourse to me in their weakness touches me far more sensibly. This same truth our Savior likewise impressed upon Saint Mechtildi, according to to the measure of faith and firm hope with which one expects to receive from my goodness and mercy, so much and infinitely more will be given to him, for it is impossible for me to refuse to man that which with steadfast faith he believes and expects. What consoling words! Encouraging also is the comment of St. Bernard, Our confidence determines the measure of the graces that we receive from God. If our confidence is great, we will obtain great graces, for divine grace is an inexhaustible fountain. Whosoever carries thither the vessel of confidence will draw therefrom a great quantity of riches. St. Augustine says, How can we fear that our petitions will remain unanswered when eternal truth itself has promised to hear him who asks? And St. Thomas says, our confidence in prayer must not support itself on our own merits, but on the mercy of God and the merits of Jesus Christ. According to this same holy doctor, it is the confidence and not the sanctity of him who prays that imparts to prayer its efficacy. We must pray with perseverance. So often and for so long a time you have prayed, what benefit have you thus derived from your prayers? Cease praying, it is useless, you will never be heard, it's all in vain. Do not listen to that demon, nor complain. Place your trust in the goodness and mercy of God. Continue to pray humbly and with confidence, and truly you will not be confounded. Ask, St. Augustine admonishes, ask, and if that for which you plead is not given you, then seek. Should that for which you seek be refused to you, very well then, knock. How long a time? Perhaps three months. Take an example from St. Monica, the mother of St. Augustine. Not three months, not three years only, but nearly seven times three years she prayed for her son until her petition was granted and Augustine was converted. Oftentimes God does not grant our petitions immediately in order to increase our merit. For by prayer, sanctifying grace is increased and our glory augmented in heaven. The touching words of our Lord to St. Gertrude on a certain occasion show how he thus mercifully delays an answer for our greater reward. The people in the locality of St. Gertrude's convent were distressed by bad weather. She and her religious had besought God to abate the trial, but perceived no good result from their prayers. The saint then addressed our Lord, how canst thou for so long a time withstand the wishes of so many persons, when I alone have by my confidence obtained favors from thy mercy of far greater value? 
Jesus deigned to make this response. Would it be surprising if a father let his son ask him a long time for a piece of money, when he had determined to give him a hundred pieces of silver every time he should make the request? Neither should you wonder if I now delay to grant your petition, because as often as you call on me for assistance, by the slightest word or thought, I prepare for you eternal goods which are worth infinitely more than what you ask. God wills that we implore him, says St. Gregory. He wills that we compel him. He wishes to be conquered by importunity. Our Savior himself teaches us this by a parable. Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go to him in the middle of the night, and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has just come to me from a journey, and I have nothing to set before him? And he from within should answer and say, Do not disturb me, the door is now shut, and my children and I are in bed. I cannot get up and give to thee. I say to you, although he will not get up and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence he will get up and give him all he needs. Rightly, St. Hilary therefore says, The obtaining of grace depends mostly on perseverance in prayer. Persevering prayer is the key that unlocks all the coffers of heavenly graces, and this key is accessible to everyone. We must pray with resignation to the holy will of God. Our divine Lord is our most perfect model, not only in all virtues, but also in prayer. We should therefore imitate His actions. In His agony He prayed, Father, not my will, but Thine be done. This condition of conformity should never be wanting in our prayers of supplication. Our Divine Master teaches us to pray in the Our Father, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. We read that Francis Borgia earnestly implored God to prolong the life of his beloved wife, who was dangerously ill. As he was fervently pleading for for this favor, a voice from heaven sounded in his ear, Your wish shall be granted, but it will not be for your good. Francis burst into tears and exclaimed, Thy will be done, O my God, not mine. If it be pleasing to thee, take not only my wife, but also my children and myself. God took his wife and daughter by death. Francis Borgia became a saint and an illustrious general of the Society of Jesus. On one occasion, our divine Lord appeared to St. Gertrude, holding in his right hand health and in his left illness. My daughter, he said, choose whichever you prefer. Which did St. Gertrude choose? Health? No. Illness? No. Unable of herself to decide which would be more salutary for her, she simply replied, Lord, let thy will be done, not mine. However, whenever spiritual needs are concerned, for example, to conquer our passions, to obtain pardon for our sins, to make progress in virtue, to obtain an increase in the love of God or the grace of perseverance, we may ask unconditionally, in this case, our will cannot be opposed to the divine will. We must ask in the name of Jesus, the Son of God, by an express promise, we might almost say by a solemn oath, vouched for the granting of our petitions if presented in His name. Amen, amen, I say to you, if you ask the Father anything in my name, he will give it to you. By these words, our Savior says to you, do not hesitate, go to my Father and present to him your petitions. It is true, you do not deserve to be heard, but I am deserving. Make reference to me and my merits, and I will support your petition at the throne of my Father. Trusting in the merits of Christ, we may confidently approach the Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus, and say to Him, O my God, grant me this petition. Look not on my unworthiness, but look on the face of Thy Christ. For the sake of the merits of Thy well-beloved Son, for the sake of His bitter passion and death, on account of His infinitely precious blood shed for me, and on account of His sacred wounds, hear me, O good Father. Will the Father listen to us? Yes, He will. 
He cannot do otherwise. 